Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm D. Lee Beard. And last week, uh, I showed you a little bit about how to um, import video into Final Cut Pro, high definition vi video, analog video, lots of different sources using different devices. If you haven't seen that one, be sure to watch it. Um, in this one, I'm going to talk a little bit about Final Cut Pro, the interface, understanding some of the basics before you actually get into editing. Next week, I'll talk more about how to actually do some editing in Final Cut. But you need to understand a few basics, a few quirkiness things about it before you dive in. And why would you want to learn Final Cut Pro? Well, it offers some advanced features over something like iMovie, particularly when it comes to layers of video where you shoot with more than one camera, or even if you have one camera, then you, you, know, you have some footage you want to stick in on top of. It's a lot easier to work with Final Cut Pro. And a lot of what I'm going to show you today is very similar to what you would do with something like Final Cut Express, which is a lot cheaper than the Pro Suite, which includes soundtrack, motion, a whole bunch of other applications that you may or may not need. Um, so it, it'll be a very similar interface. I am dealing with Final Cut Pro 6. And I'm not going to go over everything you need to know about Final Cut. I'm trying to go over the basics so you can dive right in and start working on a project without having to go through a whole course because Final Cut Pro is a pro application for a reason. It's Final Cut Pro because it's a complicated program. But I'm going to show you some of the basics to simplify this so you can get in and use this program. First, let's start with uh, some of the interface. When you first launch the program, now usually it prompts you for something, it'll ask you about can't find a FireWire device like a, a camcorder or a deck to import video. If you don't have one imported, you're not hooking anything up, don't worry about that. Otherwise, you might want to plug that in and turn it on and then click OK for it to f try again to try to find the, uh, uh, the device that you're using. It also will usually prompt you for where you want to save your files uh, in a thing they call a scratch disk. Now a scratch disk is where they're going to put all your files. Like if you import video, you do create little rendering, little video effects, it's got to save those files somewhere. You have a Final Cut Pro file um, and your Final Cut Pro file is just a really small one. It points to all those other resources. They aren't all included in a single file. Okay, so it can get a little confusing as to where everything is. So you got to think a little bit on organization before you do anything. Now, if you do launch Final Cut Pro and it doesn't prompt you about scratch disks, that means it thinks it already knows where that would be, and it may or may not be right. So you always want to make sure that you check to make sure your scratch disk is set right, particularly if you're sharing your computer with another person. And it's nice to be able to change your scratch disk based upon projects that you're working on, so you can easily trash old video and not have to worry about that hogging up your hard drive. So what I always do is when I launch Final Cut is um, I always go to the system settings. And this is what you might see at the beginning when you first launch Final Cut Pro for the first time after it's been installed. And what I do is this is the thing about your scratch disk. And that's what you got to worry about. You have your video capture, audio capture, video render, and audio render. And what you can do is you can set, and it's hard to read this because it's kind of abbreviated, but you can click on set. And then you can choose where you want to put it. Now by default, it's often going to put it in your main home directory, um, actually in your documents folder, in a folder called Final Cut Pro Documents. I prefer to keep things organized because I work with multiple projects. I like to set it every time for a specific project so I know then I can delete that whole folder and get rid of all those files once I'm done working on that project. So what I usually do is I actually go to my movies folder if you don't see your movies folder here on the side, you can always click on your main directory, slide over, and you'll find your movies folder there. And what I do is create a new folder, and then I call it whatever. I'm going to call this one um, FCP Tutorial. All right. Click Create, and now I have a folder. I'll click Choose. And now you can see right here that it's chosen the Final Cut Pro tutorial folder. And that's where it's going to save files. So if I import video hooked up one of my devices, that's where it's going to put stuff. Okay? And you want to try to keep all of your stuff saved in that same folder as well to keep everything nice and neatly organized. And you might want to also set your cache files to be put in the same location. So right now it's set to a different location. So if someone came along and they trashed that folder thinking they could trash all their project, they might trash some of your other information that you might want. So I always go through here and go set, and I go back to my movies folder, choose my Final Cut Pro tutorial, and I do that for all th each one of these, all three of them. And set, uh, movies, Final Cut Pro tutorial, choose. And now I have all those set, and um, that's the key thing 
you want to make sure none of this stuff is, is checked down here. The defaults are usually just fine. If yours says something different than what you're seeing on mine, you might be running into some problems, so I just stick with that. And just click um, OK. That way, all your files will be saved in that folder. All right? Now, uh, one other thing you might be interested in paying attention to is, before you even get started, is user preferences. Now, the system settings and user preferences are a different thing. Now, under user preferences, there's a couple of things that you might want to do. Boy, there's a lot of stuff. and You see all these tabs up here. Don't worry about it. That's that pro stuff I said you probably don't even have to know. Um, the key thing you want to do is levels of undo. It is really easy to need to, you know, Apple Z, Control Z, Command Z, to, to be able to, not Control Z, Command Z, uh, to back up because you made a, a bunch of mistakes. It's easy because you start cutting the video, you cut a video, you add a transition, add a transition. Suddenly these things add up and you've easily done more than 10 items. I usually like to have a levels of undo is to un be able to undo 50 things, the last 50 things that I did. Because every little click you do, everything you move, you nudge a little bit, that's counted as an action. So I usually, first thing I do is I take that 10 and I up that up to 50. I know some people that like to up to, to like 100. It will take up a little bit more of your RAM if you, it, the more you increase this. Um, but I found 50 works for me really well. But, you know, play with it with you if you feel like you have a lot more times you have to undo and suddenly it won't undo anymore because it ran out of the number that it remembered, kept in RAM. And then maybe try upping it a little bit. But I make a lot of mistakes, so 15 is better than the 10 default that they give me. The other thing you might want to point out uh, that you might want to turn off is right here. This says abort capture on dropped frames. I often uncheck that. And the reason I do that is because sometimes when I'm capturing video, there will be a dropped frame, a problem with the videotape. So what I want to do is to make sure it doesn't abort the whole capture. Because obviously if it does have a dropped frame, there's a problem with the tape, I still need to import it. So go ahead and take it and then I can try to fudge it and try to resync the audio and make up for that little glitch where there was a a wrinkle in the tape or something. And so really that 50 is the key thing you need to do and, and uncheck the abort capture on drop frames. Click OK.